Why are some languages more difficult than others? It's a subject that comes up all the time. I want to talk about that today and then I'm going to introduce you to a very interesting person where we discuss the subject in greater detail. I think there are six or seven major reasons why we find learning languages difficult and some more difficult than others. The first reason I think and one of the biggest reasons is that we put too much pressure on ourselves. It's difficult to learn a language. In other words, it's more difficult than speaking your own language. When you speak your own language, there is no no pressure and even there you have a much larger passive vocabulary than active vocabulary. Point number two then is the more different the language is from your own language, the more difficult it's going to be. Obviously a different writing system or similar vocabulary, similar structure. One example which I'll show you is when I go to do Dutch, it's very easy for me because it's written in the Latin alphabet. It has a lot of common vocabulary with languages that I already speak. So it's a breeze. Let's take the example of Dutch. I decided to play around a bit with Dutch. I hadn't been studying Dutch. I went in there and and I did the first five lessons in sentence view and I just breezed through it in no time. Even though the Dutch shows me that there are 79% new words, in fact the language is so similar to languages that I know that I can go through it in sentence view, understand it, and pretty soon I'm getting a flavor of Dutch and I feel I'm getting somewhere. If I go now to Arabic for the same percentage of unknown words, even this it says 12% unknown words, I know it's going to be super difficult for me. It's not not just the new words, it's also how similar the language is to a language that you already know. The third reason is I think people take on too much at one time. That's why we have sentence mode at link. You know, reduce the amount of strange new words that you are looking at. Help yourself as much as possible. Listen to it. Make it less strange. Take it in smaller bites. A fourth reason is that certain languages have sort of quirks. It might be the spelling system in English or even in French or even in Greek or it might be gender or it might be case system in German or Slavic languages. So these particular quirks can make some languages more difficult than others. A fifth reason is the availability of interesting content. I think when we start we have a high tolerance for kind of repetitive and somewhat boring material but we have to then get on to things of interest and some languages just have more availability like English, like Spanish, like Russian of that kind of interesting content at our level. Another big factor is your inherent motivation. So a language may be difficult intrinsically for all the reasons that I've pointed out. It's more different. It has these quirks call it. There's a lack of resources but if you're tremendously motivated you can overcome those. So let's make that just sort of a brief introduction to this subject and now I want you to meet Zoe of Zoe Languages and we discuss this in greater detail. So it, it's very appropriate uh, you are from China so many people consider Chinese to be very difficult. I was recently in Poland. The Poles consider their language to be very difficult. The Koreans say their language is the most difficult. I'm having trouble with Arabic right now. I know that you speak Persian and Arabic and of course you're a native speaker of Chinese. From your perspective what is the most difficult language to learn? Okay, firstly, I want to thank you. I want to say that I was inspired by you. I've been watching a lot of your videos and after learning Arabic, I've decided to learn Turkish and Persian because of you, because you have inspired me. I want to oh, say wow. thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know that FSI ranking? Foreign yeah, Service Institute. Exactly. This famous ranking is geared towards English speakers or mm -hmm. very depending on your mother tongue. Some people will still insist there's no such thing as the most difficult language. They argue right. it's Russian, it's Greek. I think you have more experience than me. Or some, uh, some people even say English as they have been learning it for so long but still can't speak it. And their points are not entirely off base. For for example, I speak seven languages. I can't count Mandarin because it's my native language. I think the most difficult foreign language for me is Arabic. It's my uh -huh. number one. I've been struggling. Can you give yeah. us a list of the languages that you speak? I will give you the list uh, according to the difficulty. The first one, number one, is Arabic. My native language is Mandarin. Right. And the most difficult language I've ever learned is Arabic. The second mm -hmm. one is German. The third one is Turkish. The fourth one is French. And then the next is Persian. The last one is English. But okay. this list isn't objective at all. It's completely relative and based on my personal learning journey. When we talk about difficulty, we can have uh, difficulty in speaking correctly. In other words, complicated grammar. We can have difficulty in pronunciation. We can have difficulty in comprehension so that the aspects of the language that are difficult can vary from language to language. Would you agree? Totally agree. But 
But I prefer to say that it's easy to define the difficulty of learning the basics of a language. Uh -huh. It's straightforward to identify how hard the pronunciation is, for example, like the four tones in Mandarin Chinese, and or the writing system, and how complex the grammar rules are because, for example, Arabic, because of the gender and a lot of all grammatical rules like German. Chinese tones and writing systems are very, very difficult. But these kind of things can be learned and practiced. But in my opinion, once we reach an upper intermediate level, all languages become equally challenging because the difficult lies elsewhere is in the immersion environment uh, your knowledge of the culture and society and so on here I would like to give an example in my opinion Persian would be easier than Arabic in terms of the the grammar in Arabic there's a complex gender plural and conjugation rules however when I travel to Iran and communicate with locals I find it easy to have a basic conversation express myself I learn very quickly at the beginner level until the intermediate level I already have a lot of vocabulary because for I knew Arabic already and the grammar easier than the Arabic. But while I was in Iran, sometimes I can even discuss like a complicated topics because we have the context of the conversation. We are interacting. People are aware that I'm a foreigner, so they speak slower, use a simple vocabulary and clear uh, sentence structure to help me understand better. However, it's still extremely challenging for me to follow my Iranian friends' conversation. They speak quickly and use a lot of colloquial expressions. So understanding then requires knowledge of culture and the social context. I certainly do agree with you that Persian is easier than Arabic. I wouldn't have put German as such a difficult language, but that's your experience. Someone whose native language is English maybe has an easier time with German. I don't know. But another yeah. aspect of difficulty is how easy it is to find good learning content, interesting learning yeah. content. So uh, generally yeah. speaking, it's becoming easier to find good learning content nowadays via the internet. I was just, uh, before our discussion, I went to MTV Lebanon and I got an MP3 file from there and I can import that into Link and it automatically transcribes it and so I have a lesson. That wouldn't have been possible even a few years ago. Persian, it's more difficult to find good learning content. In some languages, there's yeah. just an abundance of good audio text learning yeah. content. So that's another factor that affects yeah, difficulty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. That's why I think it's not really fair to put English at the end of my list. We already learn English at school. Mm. And these days, we are exposed ourselves to English content, as you said. It's easy to find immersion environments which make our study seem easier compared to languages that lack learning resources such as Persian or Turkish. So I personally don't find English difficult, <laughs> not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. But it also depends, you know, some people say, well, English is easy. It, it is easier because of the environment. So many people speak English, whether they're native speakers or not native yeah. speakers. Now, then the question is, how well do you want to speak this language? There are people, for example, who say that French is hard to understand because of the liaison, because it's hard to hear the clear yeah. sort of definition of where one word ends and the next word uh -huh. begins. Japanese is somehow difficult because of the way the Japanese people communicate. There's a lot of things that are not said that are kind of understood. So I think every language comes with its difficulty. To me, the biggest issue is motivation. If you're very motivated, the difficulties fade away. Agree. I have a question for you, actually. Yeah. You know, 20 languages. More, right? Not always up to the level I'd like, but experience learning 20 languages, yes. I'm curious about your ranking, the difficulty ranking of these languages. Well, right now I would put Arabic at the top. If I say, okay, Chinese, the difficulty there is the characters. There's, that's just a matter of time. Mm. You have to put in so much time because you no sooner learn a character than you forget it and you got to learn it again and again. And so that takes a lot of time. On the other hand, when mm. I was learning Chinese, it was my full-time job. So I was doing mm. it six, seven hours a day. So within a year, oh. I was reading book in Chinese. The grammar yeah. in Chinese is extremely easy. It's probably the easiest grammar of any language I've ever learned. Nothing changes. There's no gender. There's no conjugation. There's some patterns of how the language works and you get used to those patterns and away you go. So Arabic certainly is up there in difficulty. I think the Slavic languages are difficult because of the very complicated grammar, so many different changes to words depending on their function mm. in the sentence. I never consider pronunciation a big issue. If I pronounce it well or less well, uh, it's good enough. You know, I, I don't worry about that. But it's hard to speak the Slavic languages accurately. In other words, correctly. Mm. Uh, in Chinese, mm -hmm. it's hard to make a mistake, assuming you have the word. And of course, another advantage in Chinese is if you get the characters, you can easily build your vocabulary because so many what we would call words in mm -hmm. English 
are in fact mm. a combination of characters. So the more mm. characters you have, the more new words you can learn or recognize or guess at. No, I would say that difficulty right now Arabic for sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's about it. The easiest to learn is any extension of a language you know, another Romance language. Another Slavic language. Korean I found difficult because of a lack of interesting content with audio and text that I could study on link. See, I'm not mm -hmm. so interested in series on Netflix. Uh, I'm interested in... K-drama or K-pop. <laughs> no, not, that doesn't interest me. But to those people who are interested in that, then there's a wealth they of material a lot for of learning Korean. Yeah. So it's very subjective. But I'm very impressed that uh, you have reached out to learn languages of different language groups. And I think it's an exciting thing to do to explore different parts of the world. Now you're exploring the Middle East, which I'm also trying to do. I was my... inspired by you. Let's hope that uh, we inspire people who are watching this to not spend too much time worrying about the difficulty, be motivated by their interests, whether it be history and geography, Agreed. as is our case, or anime uh -huh. for Japanese, or K-pop for Korean, or whatever it might be for Chinese, or other languages, and go out yeah. and explore the world. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much. And you are thank Zoe you. Languages on YouTube, and people can go there and watch you explore these different languages. I saw your videos when you were in Iran, conversing with the people there in the shops, or with your friends. A wonderful example for us to follow. Thank you for joining thank me. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.